Father. Come on, somebody give Jesus a clap offering. Oh, somebody give Jesus a clap offering. Hallelujah. Give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, a clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we want to welcome all our online viewers. Don't touch this dial. Something is about to happen. Hallelujah. Don't let anything distract you for anything. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be cataclysmic. God is about to touch you in a way that he had never touched you before. If you believe it, shout yes. yes. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. I want you to talk to the Father and tell the Lord that God, I am in your presence. Let me not go back the same. Open your mouth and talk to him. And tell him, let me not go back the same. Open your mouth, somebody, and talk to him. That tonight, you will have divine encounter with him. You will have supernatural encounter with him. You are not living here empty. You are living here with the power of God. You are living here with a testimony. You are living here with a miracle. You are living here with a breakthrough. Open your mouth and talk to him. Tell him your expectations. Open your mouth and talk to him. All heavens declare The glory, glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? All heavens declare, all heavens declare. Lord, the, the glory, glory of, of the risen Lord. Who can compare? Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? With the beauty of oh. Lord, the glory of the 
We worship you, O God, at a voice. I have a father. He calls me his own. He 
He'll never leave me No matter where I go I have a maker I have a maker He formed my heart He formed my heart Oh, before even time began Before even time began My life was in His hands My life was in His hands Give it up to them. I want you to look at two people and tell them, God is here. God is here. God is here. teach you on a subject of entitled when God shows up. Amen. Somebody say when God shows up. Because he's going to show up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to say it like you mean it. When God shows up. Oh say it again. When God shows up. Oh shout it. When God shows up. Please you may be seated in the heavenly places when God 
shows up. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your presence. I thank you because you are in our midst. You are not just in our midst, but you are in our midst with the heavenly host. Yes, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here. Jesus, we thank you that you are here. Let it be known, not only to the congregation here and to the viewers, but let it be known globally that you, O oh Jehovah, you are God. And beside you, there is none. God, let me speak as your oracle and as your mouthpiece. Let me decrease that you might increase. Give me the oil that makes teaching and preaching easy. And Father, let this atmosphere be the atmosphere of the prophetic. Let it be the atmosphere of deliverance. Let it be the atmosphere of the miraculous. Let it be the atmosphere of signs and wonders. Let it be the atmosphere of instant healings. Let it be the atmosphere of manifestations. Let it also be the atmosphere of revival such as we have never heard or read before. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. Now, for the last time, I want you to say this with me. When God shows up. <laughs> or say it like you mean it. When God shows up. I don't know about you, but there are times that you find yourself in precarious, difficult, complex situations and you ask, God, where are you? I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who have been there. Uh, maybe you have not been there. But I have been there where I have asked God, God, where are you? Where are you? And oftentimes, the reason why we ask that, God, where are you? Because oftentimes, to us, we don't feel his presence. That is why we ask, God, where are you? Because if we feel his presence and we notice his presence, we wouldn't have asked that. But sometimes, situations and conditions and adversities and storms put us in a place where we don't feel his presence. When the battle becomes so fierce, when the battle becomes so intense, when the battle becomes unending, when you have prayed all the prayers, you have done all the fastings, you have sown all the seeds, but it looks like the battle will never end. The situation will never go away and the storm will never cease. Oftentimes, when you come to that place, you begin to ask, God, where are you? Where are you in the midst of all this? Especially, when your enemies begin to speak and they begin to say, where is her God? Or where is his God that he serves and worships continually? How come that his God has not delivered him? How come that his God has not delivered her? How come that his God has not healed her of this incurable disease? How come that his God has not delivered him out of this painful affliction and storm and adversity and difficulty and hardship? How come? 
And oftentimes, in such situations and circumstances, in fact, your enemies look like they are winning. Your enemies, those that want your downfall, those that doesn't want the will of God and the counsel of God for your life to stand, those that resist and opposes you, those that raises satanic authors to speak against your life and your destiny, it looks like they are winning. It looks like they have a, a, an upper hand. And you ask yourself, God, why are you not showing up? I don't know if you have been in a situation where you want God to show up so bad to let your enemies know that you are serving a living God and God is quiet. When you have cried and God is quiet, you have lamented and God is quiet. You have had all night and God is not giving you any sign. And God is not telling you anything. And you are not having any vision. And you are not having any dream to encourage you, to assure you that he is still there and he is still with you and he knows what is going on. It looks like the enemy is winning. When everything has fallen apart, your marriage is falling apart, your relationship is falling apart, your career, your family is falling apart, nothing is working for you. The, it, it looks like the heavens above you is shut. The ground beneath you has become iron. No harvest. And it looks like when you pray, your prayer just hits the ceiling and comes back to you. And your enemies are rejoicing. They are having banquet. They are having parties. They are laughing. They are making a mockery, not only of you, but of your God. They scorn and they ridicule you. And you say, God, where are you? Why are you not showing up? Doctors are saying stuff to you. You have this disease. You have to do surgery. You have this infirmity in your body. We have never seen it before. This is our first experience. And so the treatment is not actually going to be a treatment. It's going to be an, an experiment. Because we don't have the remedy. We don't have the antidote for this infirmity, for this illness, for, for this disease. You ask God, where are you? This morning, I'm going to tell you where God is. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 63. And I am going to break this one verse after the other. I'm going to teach you more than preaching for you to get it. Because after all the battles, after all the warfares, God must show up. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 63, the verse number two. Sixty-four, I'm sorry. The verse number three. Isaiah 64, the verse number three. Pardon me. I want you to watch this very carefully. He said, for when you did awesome things, somebody say awesome. awesome. <laughs> somebody say awesome. awesome. 
For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. For when you did awesome things, awesome things, the awesomeness, that simply means magnificent things, stunning things, things that the human mind couldn't comprehend and apprehend. Reckoning things. Things beyond our comprehension. When you did awesome things. When God shows up. Everything he does is awesome. Listen. When God shows up. He will do in your life what man cannot do. When God says that, it is enough. When God says that, the tears is enough. The battle is enough. The curses is enough. The pain is enough. When God says that the sleepless night is enough, the anguish is enough. When he comes down in his glory, when he comes down in his beauty, he does awesome things. Awesome things. Things that are mind-blowing. Things that are mind-boggling. And the reason why the Bible uses awesome things because there is no any other word to use. If there is any other word to use to describe when God shows up, when God moves on your behalf, when God moves as it relates to your destiny, as it relates to your adversity, as it, it relates to your pain, what God does, I am telling you, it is beyond anything you could ever imagine. Project it again for me. For when you did awesome things that we did not what expect. Which means that when anytime God shows up, what God does in our life, it goes beyond our expectation. Amen. You see, you focused one thing. You desire one thing. But God does beyond and above what you desire. You ask him for one thing. But he goes beyond and above. And gives you much more than you can accommodate. He gives you in the overflow. Why? Because when God shows up, he beats your expectation. He said, you did beyond our expectation. When he shows up. Listen, what makes you think that God will not show up? With all that you have been through. <laughs> the light shineth brightest when there is darkness. The glory of God shines brightest when your destiny and your life and everything around you is bleak. God doesn't show up when it is possible. He shows up when it is impossible. That is why in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the attacks, in the midst of the battles, all the prayers and the fasting, he never said a word. 
Because if he shows up, he shows up at the time of possibility. And the Bible makes us to understand that the specialty of God is impossibilities. He is the God of the impossibilities. If you can handle it, he won't touch it. If you can deal with it, he will not show up. If you can prevail by yourself and by the arm of the flesh, he will not show up. If it is within your power and your means and within your reach, he will not show up. But when it is beyond and above, when you are overwhelmed and you don't know what else to do, and you have been abandoned and rejected and forsaken by family, friends, and loved ones. That is when Jehovah shows up. He shows up to let you know that he is still God over your life. With all the cases that have been spoken against you, Tonight, God has no choice but to show up. With all the things that you have been through, heavens has no choice but to show up. And the reason is because this is your season of your testimony. It is your season of supernatural divine manifestation. It is your season to sing a new song. It is your season to see the glory of God and the hand of God and the promises of God being made manifest in your life. That is why God is going to show up. Project it for me. There is something that he said that I, I want to get to that point. He said, for when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down. You came down. And the mountains trembled before you. Mountains are symbols of your troubles. Mountain is a symbol of obstacle. Obstruction, hindrances. A mountain is a stronghold. A mountain is a strong man. A mountain is an altar. A mountain is that which has been designed by the kingdom of darkness stopping you from getting to your destination. And the Bible says that when God shows up, the mountains tremble when he shows up. <laughs> Do you know what that means? When God shows up, your problem begins to be afraid. Amen. Your troubles fear. In fact, your fear fears. When God shows up, and when God shows up, the reason why the mountains tremble is because when God shows up and God wants to do an awesome things in your life and do beyond your expectation, he silences your enemy and your enemy is the mountain. Amen. Those who are speaking against you, those who are decreeing against you, those who have made a vow and a covenant with the devil that as for you, you will not see his glory. That as for you, you will not rise up. That as for you, you will not see peace. That as for you, you will not laugh. You will not have tranquility in your life. God comes down to silence them. Those who want you dead, he shows up. And when he shows up, the death that they want upon you, the death comes upon them. When God shows up, somebody shout Jehovah show up. Or oh, somebody shout Jehovah show up. When God shows up, the arrows that they shoot at you, the arrows boomerangs. It retakes back into their own bosom when God shows up. When God shows up, wherever they have locked your glory, wherever they have locked your destiny wherever 
they have locked your blessings wherever they have locked your breakthrough wherever they have locked your health wherever they have locked your marriage wherever they have locked your business and your career when God shows up let me tell you there is an automatic deliverance there is a supernatural release there is a divine release I don't know who I came to talk to this early morning but I came to an announced to somebody that you are being released from every clutches of the enemy from every hold of the enemy your mountains are quicken your mountains are fleeing your mountains have become flat and plain if you believe it shout yes when God shows up the mountains quick they tremble And when God shows up, he does beyond and above. The Bible says that surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. Listen to me. Your cry, there is an end. The woman with the issue of blood, she was rejected and ostracized. She was relegated to the background. She was thrown out of the city. Why? Because her affliction has made her to become an abomination. Her infirmity, her storm has made her to become detestable. Nobody wants to connect with her, including family members and friends. Nobody wants to associate themselves with her not because of her person but because of her storm not because of who she was but because of her circumstance there are some of you you have lost precious people because of your circumstance some people have walked out of your life because of your condition you are standing all by yourself. You don't have anybody to talk to. You don't have anybody to speak to. And those who are even willing to listen to you, when you talk to them, they will not understand what you are going through. Because where you are, they have never been there before. And so they don't understand. There are some of you, when you begin to explain your condition and your circumstances and your affliction and your storm, they think that you are psycho. They think that something is wrong with you. And there are some of you, people have come to a conclusion that you are having mental issues. You are having psychological problems. Because the things that you tell them that you are going through to them, it is unbeliever. How can one human being go through all this? In my work with God, I have come to understand that when you carry a great destiny, you will walk through some things. When you are normal, you will face normal things. But when you are abnormal, uh -huh. when you are not ordinary, the battles also will not be ordinary. Uh -huh. When you are not ordinary, the storm will not be ordinary. When you are not ordinary, the attacks from the kingdom of darkness will not be ordinary. When you are not ordinary, Satan will not assign witches against you. He will assign principalities against you. When you carry greatness in the inside of you, beloved, what comes against you? It is not just tornadoes and tsunamis and whale winds. But what comes after you is the kingdom of darkness. And the people that you are talking to, because they don't carry what you carry, they don't understand. They don't understand. The woman was thrown out with the issue of blood. 
he was outside of the city all by herself why because she had an issue the issue cut her off from everybody the issue isolated her they are some of you your challenges and your problems and your attacks and your battles have isolated you it has secluded you and cut you off from everybody just like the woman with the issue of blood and she has been going through this for 12 years and how many of you know that 12 years is a long time to be having an issue of blood bleeding hemorrhaging for 12 years of every day I want you to visualize that I want you to imagine that I want you to think about that I want you to contemplate on that the woman was losing blood every day. And you must understand that while she was losing the blood, she wasn't at the hospital for any form of transfusion of blood. In other words, for 12 years, she was dying slowly but surely. And when you are bleeding like that for 12 years, your strength is gone. Your energy is gone. There is nothing left. All you experience is weakness. You become anemic. But when God decided to show up, Jesus didn't come to town because of the people that were following him. Jesus came to town because of this woman. Heavens had the meeting. The 24 elders came to the conference room because God, Jehovah, subpoenaed them. The Holy Ghost was there. The patriarchs were there. The archangels, the cherubim and the seraphim, the 24 elders were in the conference room. And God said, the time of vindication, the time of deliverance, the time of healing for this woman has come. It can no longer be delayed. It can no longer, this woman can no longer wait. I don't know who I came to talk to, but your breakthrough can no longer wait. Your miracle can no longer wait. Your healing can no longer wait. Your testimony can no longer wait. Because heavens have had the meeting and they have come to a conclusion that this is your time. This is your season. This is your moment. And guess what? You may be seated. Guess what? In the meeting, God said to all these people that this thing is not going to happen privately. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> you didn't catch it. You will catch it later. God said, this breakthrough, this miracle, when we show up, because I am not just going down. I am going down with all of you. The host of heaven, the camp of heaven. I am coming down with these celestial beings and terrestrial beings. I am coming down with them. And this healing and miracle and breakthrough and elevation, it is not going to be in the secret place. And the conclusion was this. This thing must happen in the presence of all her enemies. I don't know who I came to talk to. But Jehovah is about to show up. The God of all flesh is about to show up. The God of wonders. The God of miracles.
miracle, the unchangeable changer, the immutable God, the impeccable God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the ancient of days, the El Elyon. He is about to show up in your family, in your relationship, in your marriage, in your ministry, in your finances, concerning your condition, he is about to turn it around. If you believe it, shout, yes! Yes! yes. He said, we cannot do this privately. Hallelujah. And so after the meeting, the what's up Jesus <laughs> from heaven they sent him a email and a test and spoke to him on social media the father says son there is a place you must be with everything that you are doing and all the places that you are supposed to go today there is a particular place that if you don't show up, your assignment is not over. You must show up. Jesus asked the Father, why the emergency? Why the emergency? Why, why, why this is emergency? Why are you paying attention to this? And God looked down on the sun and said, because my daughter has cried out to me. Everybody has deserted her. She is all by herself. But I want men and women to know that they can reject her and despise her. But as for me, he is God. I am with him, with her. And Jesus said, who is this person? He said, this woman has an issue of blood but before i begin to expound on that i want to ask a couple of questions how come god didn't show up the first year he didn't show up also the second year like some of you here under the sound of my voice you expect him to show up a week ago, but he didn't. A month ago, but he didn't. A year ago, but he didn't. Five years ago, but he didn't. And the reason is because if he shows up, it will not be a miracle. <laughs> if he shows up, it will not be a miracle. And the other reason why he never showed up was because he was gathering your enemies at one spot. <laughs> because don't forget, the Bible says that and the crowd followed Jesus. And all the crowd that followed Jesus knew about the condition and the situation and the circumstance and the ailment and the disease and the infirmity and the affliction of this woman. Multitude followed followed Jesus. And in those days, when they mentioned multitude, they exclude women. And so, if the Bible call men multitude, imagine women. Include children. And you know, anytime there is a gathering, if the men are 10, the women are 100. It is just natural. Natural. And so, if the Bible is calling men multitude, and in scripture, in the New Testament, when the Bible says multitude, is 5,000 and up. And so, you just multiply 5,000 at least times three. That is 15,000 excluding children. They were following Jesus because God want to display his power for one woman in the presence of all her enemies. God got 
gathered all her enemies at one place. I will be coming to Isaiah 64 very soon, verse 3. At one place, they gathered at one place. Jesus was used as a magnet to attract all her enemies at one place. Because God said, this thing must happen in the presence of her enemies. So somebody will say, Pastor Grant, how did you know that all these people are her enemies? This is how I know. So many people have preached this message. And so many people have said so many things. Thinking is a revelation, but it is foolishness. Because it is just a simple logic. So many people have taught and preached that the woman with the issue of blood press through. It is impossible. It is impossible for the woman with the issue of blood to press through the crowd. It cannot be possible. And so, Pastor Grant, what is your argument? If the woman has been bleeding for 12 years, she is anemic. Her strength is completely gone. Where will she get the strength to be able to press through such a crowd to touch the hem of Jesus' garment? It is not possible. And so the woman with the issue of blood never pressed through the crowd because the strength is not there. The capacity is not there. The ability, the power wasn't there. So, it is impossible for her to press through the crowd. But because it was her enemies that have gathered, who knew her affliction and her pain and also knew her address outside the city. They were watching. All of a sudden, here comes the woman that has been plagued. Ay, 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 ay. Somebody shout, God, show up. Yes. Or oh, somebody shout, God, show up. Yes. Listen to me. This morning, in your ministry, God will show up. Yes. In your calling and assignment, and purpose and mandate, Jehovah, will show up. In your education, God will show up. In your family, your children, Jehovah will show up. Here comes the woman. And immediately she got out inside the gate. Got to the gate walking towards Jesus. Everybody saw her coming. I want to ask you a question. How did they know that she was coming with such a crowd? You know how sometimes when you are going through storm and affliction and pain, the enemy looks at you and be making a mockery of you. Hmm? They are looking and laughing. They are some of you as you are sitting there. Believe you me, they are watching and they are laughing. Let's see what will become of him. Let's see what will become of her. He thought he is all that. She thought she is all that. Let's see what will become of her. Let's see if she will be able to survive this storm. They are standing and they are watching. You remember Apostle Paul? When he was apprehended, they were headed to mortar. There was a shipwreck. And that in a city by the name of mortar. The Bible says that it was winter season. It was Europe. Winter season. It was extremely cold. And the Bible says that he gathered a bundle of stick. So that he can warm himself. He set fire on the stick. And the Bible says that there was a venomous beast. There was a serpent. There was a snake. When the fire came upon the bundle of woods, and the Bible says that, and the serpent jumped out.
out of the fire and fasting itself on Paul. And watch this. The Bible says that the indigenous of that city, they stood and they watched. People are standing and they are watching. They are, watch, they are not watching for your good. They are not watching for your advancement. They are watching for you to fall and die. The Bible says they stood and they were watching for Paul to fall and die. Not only that, they started accusing him of something that he has not done. They said, this man is a cursed man. Even though he has survived the shipwreck, but because of his evil, judgment will not leave him. If only you know what people are saying about you, you will be amazed. When they gather what they are saying about you, you will be shocked. When they stand in front of you, they speak good words. When you turn your back, they begin to speak evil. If you know the people that want your downfall, if only you know the people that want you dead, not you just dead. They want to see your marriage dead. They want to see your business dead. They want to see your family dead. They want to see your ministry dead. They want to see your calling dead. They want to see everything around you dead. But thank God for my God. The God that shows up. The God that shows up. I like it when David said, don't give me to the wheels and don't give me to the desires and the expectation of my enemies. Don't give me. Don't let the projections and the predictions and the expectations and the perceptions of my enemies, them that devise against my head. God, let it not come to fruition. Listen to me. This morning, it's a morning of a divine turnaround. Yeah. They are expectation concerning you and concerning everything that concerns you. It shall not stand. Why? Because today, God will show up in prayer city. And God is not just showing up for everybody, but he is showing up just for you. This all night is tailored for you. This all night is designed for you. Why? Because God wants to show up. The Bible says that, and the people of Malta, they stood there watching for Paul to fall and die. They stood there waiting and waiting, but the guy was still standing. And your enemies will wait forever. You will not fall and die. What others couldn't survive, you will survive it. What others couldn't withstand, you are going to withstand it. You are going to become an enigma to them. Mysterious, cabalistic. They will not be able to figure you out. They will not be able to sniff you out. <laughs> you will be like the wind to them. When they think you are coming from the west, you show up at the east. Where they think it will be your exit, it will be your entrance. Where they think it will be your entrance, become your exit. You will be unpredictable. I don't know who I came to talk to, but I came to announce to somebody that Jehovah is about to show up. He's about to show up. The Bible says that when they waited and waited and waited and waited and nothing happened to him. And the Bible says, and they changed their mind. Do you know how your enemies change their mind? When God comes to town. Yeah. When God comes to town, your enemies change their mind. When God comes to town, he makes himself known. He makes himself manifest so that your enemies will know that they are serving other gods.
God, but your God supersedes and transcends every other God. Before him and beside him, there is none. The God that shows up. That is why that sickness that you brought here this morning, it will dry up. You didn't hear what I said. I said it will dry up. I don't care what the doctors have said. I said I don't care what the doctors have said. There is balm in Gilead. Jehovah Rapha is here. The physician of all physicians is here. I said that sickness will dry up. That sickness will leave your body. If you believe it, shout fire. Oh, shout fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. You may be seated. This afternoon when I was praying, I told my, my wife will tell you, I was praying, I came to the church and I was praying around the clock. All of a sudden, I saw you in a casket. Stand up for me. Be standing. And I told, I told first lady, I said, not under my watch. It was, it was sudden. It was so sudden. People were shocked. It says shock waves. People were amazed. I said, not under my watch. I said, God, this cannot happen. Not under my watch. I will be coming to you. You may be seated. And the Bible says that, and they changed their mind. After today, they will change their mind. They will change their mind. The woman with the issue of blood showed up. When he showed up, here was Jesus in the midst of the crowd, the center of the crowd, because everybody wanted to get his attention. Everybody wanted to have a piece of him. But when they saw the woman with the issue of blood, the woman didn't push through. The woman didn't press through. The woman didn't even, didn't shout, give me way. Who will listen to her? The abomination. Who will listen to her? The outcast. Who will listen to her? The nobody. Who will listen to her? Sometimes circumstances and situations and conditions have a way of making you a nobody. The attacks of the enemy. The battles of life have a way of reducing you into nothingness when you know who you are. But yet the people that see you don't see your true identity. All they see is your circumstance. There are so many of you here. You are not defined by your purpose. You are not defined by who you are. You are defined by your circumstance. You are defined by your trouble. You are defined by your pain. You are defined by your storm. You are defined by your calamity. You are defined by your hardship. You are defined by your adversity. You are defined by your challenges. You are defined by the things that life throws at you. The woman showed up. Instantaneously, the crowd saw her. And they say, hey, I believe one person shouted, here come the abomination. And immediately they shout, here come the abomination. The crowd said, where is she coming from? Immediately, the crowd parted into two. One on the left and the other on the right, yes, like the Red Sea, parted into two. Why? Because she's an abomination. And according to the Levitical law also, she is an abomination. Why? Because anybody that touches her automatically becomes an abomination. Anybody that touches her or anybody that she touches becomes an abomination. Anybody that eats from the same plate, that person becomes an abomination. If she sits anywhere and you sit at the same place, you become an abomination. So when the crowd heard, abomination is coming, they parted into two. Tell me, this woman, can she press through? 
The crowd divided like you are sitting. One side and the other. All of a sudden, Jesus himself was shocked that the crowd that want a piece of him, the crowd that was touching him, the crowd that wanted his attention, all of a sudden has been divided into two that Jesus was standing all by himself with the crowd on the left and on the right. The woman with the issue of blood didn't press through. She walk. I feel something. You don't understand. She walked. But you must understand that she didn't run. You must also understand that she couldn't walk fast because she didn't have the energy to walk fast. She took her time to walk whilst her enemies are standing and watching. It was another experience of the Noahic covenant. The Bible says that, and God said to Noah, build an ark. Make sure that all the animals in pair enter into the ark. How many of you know that horse and zebra will get in first? Because they are fast. They run fast. All the other animals got in. But you see, the ark couldn't be closed until the turtle and the snail enters. In other words, it doesn't matter how fast you get into the ark. The ark is not taken off. And everybody that has gotten into the ark must wait for the turtle and the snail. And how many of you know that the snail and the turtle, they take the attire? The woman with the issue of blood was taking her tie. Jesus was standing, waiting for the woman. I don't know who I came to talk to, but tonight, this morning rather, Jesus is standing, waiting. He was standing there and he was waiting. The crowd was looking on whilst this woman was walking slowly. She walked slowly. Walked slowly. She was getting there. And while she was getting there, you think the crowd was just standing, watching her. They were murmuring. Look at her. The nobody. Look at her. She smells. Look at her. She stinks. Look at her. She is dirty. Look at her. Who made her come among our midst? When human beings have gathered, you too. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? There are some of you here. Huh. Your situation and your condition have reduced you to less than a human being. You, you need to hear when your enemies are talking about you. You need to hear when they are talking about you. When they meet and they gather and they are talking about you, you need to hear them. You will be amazed. You will be shocked. You will be in awe. You think they call you by your name? No. They call you by your condition. They call you by your situation. They call you by your pain. They call you by what is happening to you. Uh, when they gather and they are talking and they see you coming, they say, here come the buried woman. Here come the jobless man. Here come the beggar. They shout, poverty is coming. Let us disperse before we are stained with poverty. Have you ever wondered why when they gather and they are talking and you show up, they disperse? Oh, Agi, I will see you later. Oh, Esther, call me. Just when you showed up, if only you know, the crowd was remembering and talking 
about this woman. But the woman didn't care because that day her salvation has come. Her deliverance has come. Her miracle has come. Her God has shown up. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus said, who is this woman? Many people touched me, but I didn't feel it. Like the way this woman touched me. The woman didn't just touch her by faith, but he touched her with all her pain. Touched her, touched Jesus with all her pain and, and the disgrace and the shame and the humiliation. He left everything that she has been through at the hand of Jesus' garment. In other words, at Jesus' feet. No wonder the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Cast all your cares upon me, for I, the Lord, I care for you. And when she touched Jesus, the flow of her issue ceased. There is somebody here I am talking to. And there is somebody that is watching me. The flow of your issue is ceasing this morning. Why? Because Jehovah has showed up. Jehovah has showed up. Jehovah has showed up. And because God showed up, this woman is dead and gone over 2,000 years, but we still talk about her. When God shows up, your name cannot be erased. Your generation also cannot be erased. When God shows up in your life, you will never ever be forgotten. Not only by your generation, but also by the generations yet unborn. If you believe it, shout yes. yes. The God that shows up. <laughs> Project the scripture for me, Isaiah 64. Give me the other translations. This is the NLT translation, the New Living Translation. It said, when you came down long ago, you know why long ago? Even when you didn't feel him, he was there. <laughs> Even when you didn't sense him, he was there. Even when you didn't smell him, he was there. Amen. When you couldn't sniff him out, he was there long ago. He said, when you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest, not just expectation, our highest expectation. Our highest expectation. I know what highest expectation is. And I know what it means by God doing beyond and above your highest expectation. Sometimes myself, listen, if you want to see a sign and a wonder, eh, you are seeing one standing and talking to your life. I'm telling you, this guy here, <laughs> This guy, it, 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 is, it is an embodiment of signs and wonders. Every day I look at myself and I say, God, you have blown my mind. Whoever taught, even my parents, whoever taught, there are some of you, you receive prophecies as it relates to the future and your destiny. And so at least you have a clue of who you are and what you will become. There are some of us. Nobody gave us prophecy. No prophecy. 
We didn't receive prophecy to know who we are and who we will become. Nobody. I had expectations. I had desires. But the Lord did beyond and above my desire. Beyond my highest expectation. Whoever thought that Raphael Grant, his own mate, childhood friend that he grew up with, mate that he went to school with, I am telling you, when I show up anywhere and they are there, they can't talk to me like they are mates. They can't talk to me like they are mate. Sometimes I played with them and said, let's talk, let's talk. I mean, forget about all the protocol. And they will tell me, we can't. Oh. We can't. And some of them will tell me to my face, we are not your equal. We cannot address you like before. God has elevated you above us and we want to acknowledge and recognize it <laughs> beyond my highest expectation beyond my highest expectation when he said I will bring you before great men and women noble men powerful men There are places that he has taken me to. There are places, the people that he has brought me before. I look at myself and I said, how did I get here? How did I get here? How did I get here? Recently, I was in D.C. I met the former president of Burundi. And she was in a state of hopelessness and helplessness with her family. Because all her assets has been taken away. And all her accounts and assets have been frozen. Food to eat is a problem. The former president of that country. She was sitting down with the husband. I ministered to her. And I told her. I said you have been through a lot and they are accusing you. Of what you have not done. She started crying. I said everything they have said about you. And the purpose and the reason. For which your assets are frozen. It is not true. And I told her. That hear the word of the Lord. Your assets. Will be released back to you. And I told her that you will go back to your country. And I said, I see you again becoming president. She and their husband, they were sitting on the chair. They fell on their knees. I lay hands on them and spoke over their life. As I'm speaking to you, she is back in her country. All the assets that was frozen has been defrost. And as I'm speaking to you, there is an election, presidential election that is coming on there and she is standing. You see, I look at myself and I look at where I am coming from. Because there are some of you, you come from aristocratic background. There are some of you, your background is full of affluence. 
There are some of you. Your family name is well known and published. It's a household name. But there are some of us. We don't have background. We don't have name. Our background is nothing to identify with. And so when I tell you that he has done beyond and above my expectation, he has. When God shows up, he turns your life around, not 180 degrees, 360. When he shows up, When he shows up, you think that this is all that it is to you. You are much more. Believe me, I said you are much more. <laughs> you are much more. I have told you a couple of times about a pastor when I was grew up, took interest in me. Because the pastor told me that I've not seen the little boy that loves God so much. And so took me under his tutelage to teach me the ways of God. He was the one that told me, he said, Son, anytime you are anywhere by yourself and there is nobody there, be careful what you do. Because know that wherever you are, God is watching you from far distance. He told me this when I was 13 years. I have never forgotten. And that statement frightens me. When you think there is nobody anywhere, God is there watching, taking records of it. Recently, I was in Ghana. The man is an old man now. I called him. I said, Pastor Raymond, I want to come and see you. When I called, he said, who is this? The voice is very familiar, but the voice looked deep. <laughs> that was what he said. I said, Daddy, it's me. He calls me Raf. I said, this is Raf. He said, what? You don't need to come to me. Tell me where you are, and I'm coming there. I was at the hotel. Lo and behold, he showed up. He looked at me. He ran when I opened the door. Held me, shook me. And he said, now that I have seen you and I have seen the glory, I am ready to depart. It was another experience of Simeon when he held Jesus in his arms. And he said, now that thy servant has seen the consolation of Israel, thy servant is ready to depart. I was overwhelmed with emotions, both of us. He knelt down at my feet and he said, Son, before I pray for you, but now you are supposed to pray for me. I couldn't pray. The tears would not stop coming down. So when the Bible talks about highest expectation, he has done beyond our highest expectation. I can identify with that. I can identify with that. I look at myself. Where I'm coming from, the church I'm coming from, back home. When I go to church, even when I want to sit at the front, the protocol people will move me to the back. I will come to church early. <laughs> but they will not let me sit at the front. Because when they look at my outfit and my containers, if I sit at the front and the bishop sees me, the anointing will disappear. <laughs> and this, I'm telling you reality. I'm telling you my life. 
And the reason why I'm sharing this with you, because I made the covenant with Jehovah. And I said, God, if you bless me beyond my expectation, if you blow my mind, wherever I go, I will tell the people where I have come from and how far you have brought me. That is why I am not ashamed to tell you where I have come from. I am not ashamed to share my testimony. Because if you don't remember where you come from, you are a despiser of the grace of God. They will take me to the back. Every time I show up, take me to the back. Nobody knew me. I come quietly and I go back quietly. And I don't come with a taxi, a cab, or a car. <laughs> I live about 20 miles away from the church. I would get up very early at dawn and walk from my house to the church because I didn't have money to take transport. And sometimes whilst I'm walking and I'm holding my Bible, the rain, rain will come down torrentially. I will be soakingly wet whilst walking to church. There are times by the time I get there, the rain has ceased, the sun has come up, and the sun has dried the dress on me. When you talk about highest, beyond the highest expectation, I know what it is. I am a man of weaknesses, but pride is not one of them. Because of where I have come from and how far he has brought me. Where I am, I don't deserve it. Not because I have qualified for it. Not because I, 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 I have what it takes to stand where I am standing. Beyond my expectations. I will go to church, listen to the word and go back, walk again. By the time they finish benediction, I'm on my way. Everybody in church will get to their house. I'm the last person to get to my house. You are talking about thousands. Got it. And I look back at myself. Now, I show up late. Everybody has got it. Thousands. And when I show up, they said the prophet is here. Protocol shows up. He will tell you, I travel, lift up your letter. He will tell you, I travel with him recently there. When I show up, the protocol is massive. Massive. It doesn't matter what is happening in the church. If somebody is even preaching, protocol massive. Left on the right, they will escort me to the throne room, to the top. To the top. The same church that I grew up from, that I was sitting at the back, I stand at the front on the pulpit and I preach to the same people. <laughs> Talking about highest expectation. When God shows up, it is beautiful. When God shows up, let me tell you, People who look down on you will look up onto you when God shows up. Listen, maybe you have given up on yourself, but God has not given up on you. You have given up on yourself, but heavens has not given up on you. When God shows up, let me finish reading the scripture. Project it for me. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectation. And oh, how the mountains quaked. How the mountains, they quaked. You came in with trouble, but you are not living with trouble. You came in with an impediment, but you are not going back with an impediment. You came in hopeless 
helpless, with tears, depressed, not knowing what tomorrow may be. You came in looking at your future and your future looks bleak. But I'm telling you, you are walking out of here. And if there had ever been any time that you have had a full assurance and confidence of your future, I am telling you, is this morning. Is this morning. <laughs> this God He's too much. Hey, this God, he's too much. Hey, God has a way of elevating you, lifting you up, showing you his glory, and making himself be made manifest in your life. The people that you look up to begin to look up to you. I am telling you, my own mother, if she wants to talk to me, she can't talk to me looking at my eyes directly. My mother, who gave birth to me, she is shy of me. She cannot talk to me looking into my eye directly. Recently, I asked her, I said, Mom, why do you do that? She said, uh, <laughs> When God shows up, when he shows up, you recover everything. Lost glory, lost blessings, lost favor, lost, lost breakthrough, lost open door, lost elevation, lost manifestation. You recover everything. You recover everything. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, Tell me where will I be? Where will I be? Tell me where will I be? Where will I be? Tell me in where will I be? Where will I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where. I be where shows up. There are some that have come to where they are because of their knowledge. There are some that has been elevated because of their background and who they are and the name that they carry. But there are some of us if it had not been for Jesus. Amen. If it had not been for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
if it had not been for the almighty God, if it had not been for the sovereign God, I don't know where, I don't know where, I don't know where you will be. <laughs> they are, they are some, they pick them from the palace. They are some also, they pick them from the mansion. They are some, they pick them from aristocratic neighborhood. But they are some of us, they, God picked us from the garbage, refuse heap. That is where he picked us from. From the garbage, the, the refuse heap. That is where he picked us from. He set us among princes that we might inherit the throne of glory. I am telling you, when God shows up, what he can do. When God shows up, what he can do. You think it's late, it's not late. God has never been late before. <laughs> he doesn't come before the time. And he doesn't also come after the time. He is always right on time. If God is showing up today, it means that today is the designated time for God to show up in your life. As a single mother, you are raising your children and you are wondering, how am I going to take care of these children? Will I be able to take care of these children? And what will these children become? What future do they have? And you say these things to yourself. Who told you that our God is asleep? They are God's sleeps. They are God have ears but cannot hear. They are God have eyes but cannot see. They are God has mouth but cannot speak. He has legs but cannot walk. They carry their God. But our God carries us. They fight for their God. But our God fight for us. They feed their God. But our God feeds us. They provide for their God. But our God provides for us. I am talking about Jehovah. Yes, yes, yes. Yahweh. I am talking about Elohim. I am talking about El Elion. I am talking about the one that lives in the past and lives in the present and lives in the future at the same time. I am talking about the everlasting king. I am talking about the Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. I am talking about Adonai. The Bible says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. The Bible says he seated upon the circumference of the earth. Who told you that you are going to die? The voice you are hearing is not God. You won't die. Amen. Who told you that you will be disgraced? You will not be disgraced. Amen. Who told you that this is the end of the road? This is not the end of the road. God is not through with you yet. He is not through with you yet. He is not through with you yet. I don't know your God, but I know my God. I, 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 I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. I am persuaded. That he is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all. That I could ever ask. No think according to his power that worketh within me. When God shows up. The three young Hebrew men thought they would die. But the fourth man shows up. 
Daniel thought that he would die in the lion's den. But Jehovah showed up. Ay, 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 ay. Paul and Silas thought that they would die in the prison. But God showed up in the prison. Peter thought that he too, his head would be decapitated by Herod. But God showed up in the prison. Who did I come to talk to? Who am I talking to? Who did I came to speak to tonight? Who? Who? The Israelites in the Egyptian captivity have come to a conclusion that they would die in Egypt. But they didn't know that there is a day of reckoning. Whilst they think that this is the end of the road for them. Whilst they think that they would die in slavery, in captivity. God showed up. God showed up. When the Lord turned our captivity again, we were like them that rent. He said, when the Lord turned our captivity again. In other words, he has done it before and he is going to do it again. He is going to do it again. He is going to do it again. <laughs> I know my God. And one thing that I know about him, Pastor Ola, when God shows up, he shows up big. <laughs> he shows up big. When he is going to do it, he does it big. My boys will say, humongous gigantic huge <laughs> when God shows up when God shows up and I'm telling you this God he shows up in star <laughs> he, he, he shows up in star King Jehoshaphat was afraid he was scared when his enemies came together to extinct them, to remove them, to kill them, to wipe them from the surface of the earth. He went before the Lord and he cried out unto God. And he said, this army is too much for me. We don't have what it takes to confront these people. Have you ever been there when your enemies look too powerful? Have you ever been there where your enemies have so much influence and power and connection and uses their connection and power and influence against you? Have you ever been there where a Satanist is your supervisor? Who doesn't like you because you have the spirit of God in the inside of you? And using his position and her position to threaten your very existence and your very livelihood. Have you ever been there before? What they have said, people, hey, one day, a man that I look up to, a man that I honor and respect, says something to me, I was shocked. That is when I came to a conclusion that in this life, you have nobody but God. When this man saw me coming to the limelight at a very fast rate, couldn't handle it. And one day called me and told me, you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere.
and thank God for my radicality. I said, I am going somewhere. He said to me, he said, what? You spoke back at me. You have disrespected me. And then he said, because you have disrespected me, they will disrespect you. And I said, you are not God over my destiny. You are not God over my destiny. <laughs> you are not God over my destiny. The Bible said, who is he? Who, who, who? Somebody shall who, 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 who? Say it my way, who, 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 who? Who is he that sayeth a thing and it cometh to pass when God has not commanded? Who, who is that person? Tell me. Who is that person? Who is that person? Job put it this way. A man born of a woman. Few are his days. He is like the grass that withered and the flower that faded away. A man born of a woman. Few are his days and full of trouble. He is here today and tomorrow is no more. Who are you? To determine my destiny. To determine my rising up. To determine my going in and my coming out. Today, every word he spoke, he has swallowed it. Every word, swallowed, swallowed, swallowed it, <laughs> swallowed it. Because God decided. To show up big. I like it the way Donald Trump says it. Bigly. God decided to show up bigly. Bigly. This God is awesome. If there is any way I, I, I have to describe him, I will say, he is too much. This God is too much. He specializes in taking the redundant, the rejects, the downtrodden, the marginalized. Lift them up, polish them, put his glory upon them and put them on a pedestal for everybody to see. Everybody to see. When God shows up. I want to conclude with the verse 4. Give me verse 4. He said, For since the world began, since the world began, no year has heard and no eye has seen a God like you. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> For since the world began, no year has heard and no eye has seen a God like you. In fact, even that translation is wrong. It's not supposed to be a God. It's supposed to be the God. <laughs> Maybe I need to write my Bible. <laughs> they are translating this thing wrong. No God. No God. Nobody has ever heard Nobody has ever seen. And there are some of you who are wondering, what is the Bible talking about? But I've heard. Hmm. What you know about God is like an ant. That is what you know about God. <laughs> you think you know him, 
you have no clue who he is. Sometimes God just blows my mind. When, just when you think that you, 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 you have a revelation of him, he switches on you. You see another dimension of him. He said, this one, I've never seen it before. There are some of you, you have seen him as a deliverer, but you have not seen him as a healer. There are some of you, you have seen him as a healer, but you have not seen him as a provider. There are some of you, you have seen him as a provider, but you have not seen him as your protector, your defense, your battle, your stronghold, the horn of your salvation. You have not seen him as your shepherd. You have not seen him as your stronghold. I lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence, from whence, from whence, from whence, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, who from the beginning of the world. We have never heard. And now we have not seen. <laughs> Our eyes have not seen. Project it for me. Let me read it quickly and we enter into some things. For since the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. <laughs> He works for those who wait for him. You didn't catch it. Some wait for man. But there are some of us, we wait on him. Some wait on connections. But as for us, we wait on God. Some wait on their credentials. But as for us, we wait on God. Yeah. And the Bible says that when you wait on him, he shows up. Yeah. When you tarry in his presence, he shows up. When you believe him, when you trust him, when you put your confidence in him, he shows up. He shows up. I am talking about the almighty God who has decided to show up this morning Amen. for you. Amen. To show up for you. To show up for you. Some of you will say, I have waited. I have waited. I have waited and 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 nothing is happening. It pays to wait. And it is also painful to wait. But if you wait, he will show up. That is why somebody said, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind wait, waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't buy way waiting. I don't buy way hating. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. I don't mind way waiting. I don't mind way hating. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. When you wait, 
It brings you to this place where you sing unto him. When peace like a river heart and light by the way when so rose like sea billows rock what anybody you are not in competition that is why you must learn how to wait that is why you must learn how to tarry in the presence of God you are not in competition with anybody the Bible says that the battle is not to the strong and the race is not to the swift the Bible says chance and time happens to them all why are you in haste? Why are you fretting? Who are you in competition with? Carry. Wait in his presence. Because this God, this morning, is showing up on your behalf. Rise on your feet.